All right, we're cooking. Yo, what is going on today, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. I know I've done a lot of build videos recently, but with season 11, you know, there's not a ton of changes happening. Smite 2 is kind of just around the corner. Not a ton of fresh stuff happening in Smite 1. I'm not too, you know, having a blast playing the same stuff that I've played for like four years. Like, yes, we've had some buffs, some changes, stuff like that. But the game feels relatively the same, and it's starting to, like, kind of catch up to me now. So to kind of get rid of that funky feeling, because, you know, this is my job. This is what I enjoy to do also. I've been trying to keep things fresh, try some things new, try something just that sounds fun, and just kind of go from there. So what I crafted for you guys is five just for fun support builds. They can be good also, in like, in competitive and ranked and stuff like that. It's just the best way to be playing the game right now isn't necessarily with these builds, but sometimes... Playing your best means playing for fun and having a fun build that sounds like a good time that you know you can kind of put your all into and be like, I'm going to do this. So I've got for you guys five builds, no bobble also, since I have that bobbles video yesterday and then the bobble video a week ago for predictions. I'm not doing bobble for this video. How come you don't want me, man? I think it'd be lame to do more bobble. So this is going to be five for fun builds with no bobble. All right, let's jump in. Starting with the obvious one, Heron, guys. Come on. You can now get to 5,500 health. Also, quick story. I didn't know that there was an actual hard cap. I thought it was a soft cap, kind of like there is power. Like, you can get to, like, 900 power or whatever power is. You can get to 900 power and then surpass it. I thought the same thing was with health. I've never seen 5,500 before. Unfortunately, that is not true. You cannot pass 5,500 health with Charon. But with this build, I think if you get to, like, 400, 500 stacks on Charon, on his passive, you can get to 5,500. And it's, it's very, very fun. Is it the best way to play Charon? Probably not, but guys, 15% of a 5,500 health shield. You know how much that is? Quick math. It's like 800, 900 shield to a teammate. Right, Mario? We'll say, we'll say 8, 8, 8, 850, Mario. Do I pass? I Of course I pass. So let's be honest, I pass. But yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I've said heroism isn't the greatest item in the game. And I think it's probably the worst support starter, but seeing this massive health shield... That your teammate gets just the one time before they buy horrific or they start horrificing you they buy gem they buy erosion and they do all these things to shut you down until then though massive shield to your teammate like a big shield next up hp5 xing chen and you know we kind of had to make it somewhat competitive so this is kind of what we cooked up compassion um it's the most hp5 you can get in one item 45 which is incredible uh thebes is a very good first item a little bit of hp5 Pairing that with the Charon's coin, which starts at 7 and can go all the way up to 35. Flag shield, which is also some more cooldown, 10% cooldown, a little bit more HP 5, 25 there. 25 on Sov, and to round it out, Sona Gaia with also 25. And then you also have the passive from Sona Gaia. You'll be very, very hard to kill on top of it. Xing Chen now when your passive is maxed out, you're getting extra max health on top of that. So in team fights, your Gaia is going to be proccing, your passive is going to be proccing, HP 5 is going to be proccing, and then... The actual HP5 from everything is going to be proccing, and you'll be very hard to deal with. There'll be a lot of messing around, running around. Will you win? Maybe not, but you'll feel pretty unkillable in my opinion. The third one, a little bit of a, a cooked up classic. A lot of you guys were upset that I didn't have Cthulhu as a support build. So now I'm giving you guys a fun Cthulhu support build. Now, why does this work? One, he's OP right now. Point blank period. He's very, very strong. But War Banner, Prophetic, Thebes, just three very good tanky items. Gives you... A lot of HP 5, I mean a lot of uh, protections and a lot of health. Glad Shield gives you a little bit of extra damage, a little bit of extra cooldown. Bay Blessed Hoops, Rod of Asclepius. Now why these two items? Well, for one, this puts you at 40% cooldown. For two, Bay Blessed Hoops gives you more health than Genji's does, which is the other option. So you, when you ult, you get more health. And then Rod of Asclepius makes your healing more, and you heal in the ultimate three. But maybe something you guys didn't know is Warbrenner procs on abilities. In Big Cthulhu Alt, your second and third ability, the knockup and the heal, are considered abilities. So if you hit all five enemy people with either the knockup or with the three, you'll get 5% healing back. 5% might not sound like a lot, but if you do like a three man knockup, four man three, three man knockup, four man three, just like that, you're sitting at 14%, and that is a massive amount of health when you're sitting at 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 health. So it's a fun build. And on top of that, Asclepius, uh, Asclepius makes it so your war banner heals you more. Your three heals your teammates more. All around a really fun build. Will you win? Again, I don't know. But you'll have a good time. And the last two, I got a lot of dip on my chip. And this one works for all of the assassins. But I'm, oh, I said no bobble. Whatever. I I'm sticking with it. There's one bobble. For the assassins, support Fenrir with Cannoneers Curus. Now again, if you play with Cannoneers, 
you will not have nearly as much gold as the enemy will have. However, you make that up with the ability to farm with Protector, the ability to clear a little bit faster with Cannoneers, and Eye of the Jungle just allows you to secure camps a little bit easier, gives you a little bit of HP 5 on top of the HP 5 from Cannoneers, and then your spike is going to be a lot faster than the enemy spike. Cannoneers is only 2,000. Thebes, 2,300. Prophetic, 2,300. I actually think they're a little bit more than 2,300. 2,350 for both? 2350. Oh, yeah. 2350 for both. I used to play this game professionally. 2350 for both. Uh, the Yone's Reverend Pridwin puts you at 40% cooldown. Sphinx's Bobble gives you that 50%. Your ultimate will be up a ton of times. You'll be jumping around doing a whole bunch of damage. And Arch Druids will be proccing, also doing a ton of damage. The build will be fun. Again, I don't know if you're going to win, but boy, you're going to have a good time. And then lastly, in the lab, guys, Kronos is not a good ADC right now. He's not a good mid laner right now. But you know what he is good at? Support. You sure about that? Now, why? Why do I think this is good? What are you? An idiot sandwich. Well, War Banner again just gives you movement speed, healing on your autos. Prophetic and Gauntlet Thieves gives you a lot of tankiness. But Witch Dagger gives you a little bit of cooldown, a little bit of 1v1 potential. And here's where it gets good. Demonic and Breastplate of Regrowth. Kronos is two. Heals you for per percent. 1% max health per second for seven seconds. So this is a 7% max health shield or max health heal. And then you also get movement speed from Breastplate of Regrowth with that. On top of that, Demonic's going to allow you to shred protection. So if you hit a three into an auto, 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 you're going to be shredding those protections, allow your mage to kind of one-shot them. But the fun part is with Blessed Barrier and Bracer of Brilliance. You're going to get a lot of movement speed and a lot of power with Bracer. And something that is unique with Bl Blessed Bra Barrier is your allied basic attacks do 10% more damage and the enemies do less. So if you start with Blessed Barrier, you put it up on the enemy side of the minions and makes the enemy ADC auto through it. You guys will have the clear advantage. For God as bad as Kronos in laning phase, good to have clear advantage. And when you get to late game, if you're either sieging or anti-sieging, you just throw this up. The enemy autos are not going to be doing much at all, or they're going to have to walk into melee range. And at that point, you can kind of punish them. And the Bracer just gives you that little bit extra power when you're fighting. And probably something that you could try that I've not done is you try to almost backdoor, maybe split push a little bit. Extra damage here, extra damage here. Hey, I'm not going to tell you how to play the game. I'm just giving you the options. I'm just laying them out for you. But yeah. Those are the five things that I've cooked up. Let me know what you guys think. What have you guys been playing that has been kind of keeping that fun in Smite? I know it's probably getting to a lot of us because we're all excited for Smite 2, but let me know. Drop some builds down below in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.